Hi, and welcome to the QuickBase Empower 2021 Quick Hit Session, Pipelines, How to Create Table-Specific Change Logs. My name is Jorge Abadia. I'm a Customer Adoption Manager here at QuickBase, and I've been here just under two years. However, I have been around the low-code space since 2013, and I'm a huge advocate of the idea of the citizen developer being empowered to solve their own operational agility last mile problems. And actually, the genesis for this session came from several conversations I've had with customers over the last few months where they were looking to track changes to data in their apps, but be able to do it inside of the app with a really simple way to set it up um, that didn't necessarily involve a lot of complexity. And so when Pipelines developed a new capability to call back previous values in a step, the idea for this session was born. In today's session, we're gonna walk through how to leverage a new Pipelines capability that I just mentioned to call back previous values in a step in order to create change logs that will show which fields changed and when, old and new values, and obviously who made the change. Now, this idea of creating change logs with pipelines is fantastic because it will give instant visibility to changes and gives you the ability to report on trends because these will be individual records in their own child table. And now, let's explain a bit of the flow. In terms of the relationship, we're going to have, in this case, a parent table called project. And each one of the changes that we're going to be tracking is going to be a project change log one project to many project change logs. Now, in terms of the flow in pipelines, is it actually a very simple two-step pipeline with a specific trigger. For the pipeline steps, we're gonna trigger on a record updated. However, we're not gonna trigger on every single change. We're gonna be triggering on specific fields that are the fields that we're interested in tracking. And once that trigger is set, we're going to create a record, again, leveraging the previous values that we'll, we'll see in a minute, how to leverage that inside of pipelines. And now it's time for a demo. So now we're inside of an app called Empower 2021 Table Specific Change Logs. This app is available on the QuickBase Exchange um, and it will have supporting documentation as well discussing this specific uh, idea of pipelines to create those change logs. Now, the first step, as we mentioned, is you have to create a table to table relationship, which we've already done. So here we have a table called project change logs. And this table project change logs is going to have a direct relationship with projects in a one to many relationship. And as you can see, we've already got some logs created and immediately a few things stand out. Now, what you can see is that obviously we've got several fields across the report here. Um, project name old, project name updated, same with estimated start date and end date, project manager, as well as status. Now, we did some really interesting things here to this report to help you call out um, specific problem areas. As an example, if a start date or an end date was pushed back, we color coded the entire record. But in order to help you identify when you're looking at this, which fields specifically changed in this record, we've actually highlighted the fields that are different from the previous values in order to make them more noticeable. How did we do this? Let's go to the settings. So in the settings, in the fields area, you'll notice that we've got labels for these fields called old, new and updated. So clearly old and new are just simply the old values or the new value from the pipeline that we'll take a look at in a minute. That said, the updated fields are actually formula rich text fields that allow me to see if the old value is not equal to the new value, create a background color of your choosing. So now that we've seen what this field does, again, this formula will be copied and available for you to use um, inside of the app in the exchange. That's how we actually 
create the highlighted features inside of the updated key. And this formula is actually repeated across all of the fields that say updated. In essence, if old is different than new, we're gonna highlight, if not, we don't. So now that we understand how the fields are constructed for our project change logs, let's go ahead and actually go to the pipeline that will make it happen. So over here in pipelines, and we're actually gonna see that there is a project change logs pipeline that's already been created and partially constructed. And we're gonna hit the three dots on the right to go ahead and highlight the edit area. And we're gonna see that the pipeline follows the flow that we mentioned earlier. We've got a record updated trigger, and you'll notice that the record updates not on any field, doesn't trigger on any field, it triggers on these specific fields. And these fields are also the fields that we use for subsequent steps. This is an important aspect of pipelines because whenever you've got a record updated trigger, even if you're not triggering on a field, if you're gonna need any field from this record for a subsequent step, it must be called out here in the fields for subsequent steps. So now we've got our triggers, we've got our fields for subsequent steps. Now let's take a look at the record create step. So in this step for create record, we're gonna scroll back up to the top here. In this field for create record, we actually have several more fields that we're gonna go ahead and use to specify values. And we've got the old and the new fields because that's what's gonna be flowing from this pipeline into that record. And immediately what we see is we have project name new is simply a dot project underscore name according to the pipeline's Jinja language. So how do we call back the previous step? Very simply. We pull in the project name over from the right hand side. It populates. And then right after the first a dot, we're gonna put our cursor and we're gonna type in dollar sign prev dot. This language, dollar sign prev with the dot at the end, is that trigger to call back a previous value in the step. So now for simplicity's sake, we're actually gonna take that dollar sign prev, we're gonna highlight it and we're gonna copy paste across the rest of the fields. So scrolling down, we see that we have to add project manager old. Okay. We're gonna add the dollar sign prev, estimated end date old, same process. And we're just gonna simply do control V to add the dollar sign prev across all of these. And then we're gonna do estimated start date old as well. And just to make sure we didn't miss any. So oh, we missed our status. So let's pull status old again. And we've got dollar sign prev. Let's do one quick check to make sure that all of our fields for the subsequent steps have been populated. And here we'll immediately notice that there's a quick change that I have to make. And in one final step, we're ready to go. So now this pipeline is ready to go. And we're gonna go ahead and turn the pipeline on and we're gonna initiate a record change. So we're gonna go ahead and turn it on. So we're gonna go back to our empowered table specific change logs. And we're actually gonna go into a project and make some changes. Okay. So we have a list of projects here. And we're gonna go ahead and take a look at the project Increase Web Presence for Acme Staple Company, and we're gonna make some changes. So we're gonna reassign 
this project from Colleen Garten to Gregory Baxter. We're gonna change the status from not started to in progress. And we're actually gonna move back the estimated start date to next week. So we're gonna hit save and close, and then we're gonna go back to our pipeline and see what happens. We see that the pipeline is starting. We have a record updated. The pipeline has run successfully with no issues. Now let's go back and see what happened inside of the record. So now we're in a record, we've updated the record, and if you scroll down to the project logs heading, we'll notice that we have a new project log record. We'll notice that the estimated start date is highlighted as are the project manager updated and the status updated to let you know that I made these changes. So, as you can see, over time you can form a pattern to get a really good idea of who's making changes when, and if a start date or an end date gets pushed back, that immediately gets flagged as a possible concern for us to manage either internally as a team or with the customer. Now, returning to the project logs table, over time, you can actually report on trends so that if there is a company for which projects are consistently getting delayed, we can take a look at it and potentially have a conversation with the project manager and the customer to see if there's anything that needs to be worked out from a communication or workflow standpoint. Each one of these fields being an individual record allows you to create custom reports such as project delays, which if we go back to the projects area, is its own summary field inside of the record. So I created a summary field called delayed end date to let you know how many times potentially a project's been pushed back. And again, if a project's been pushed back consistently, it may be a sign of a larger issue. Now, again, besides projects, table-specific change logs have many applications inside of a business, including uh, sales opportunity tracking, task tracking, um, and other data cleanup uh, and maintenance concerns. So, Hopefully you found some value in this and you'll be able to very quickly and easily implement this inside of your tables where you're looking to track specific changes. So hopefully you've enjoyed today's brief session on creating table specific change logs with pipelines. Again, what we did was walk through pipelines new capability to recall previous values in a step that enables you to create change logs that will show which fields changed and when, old and new values, as well as who made the change. Hopefully you'll be able to apply this into your own apps or use case to get some real value and continue to grow with QuickBase. Thanks again.